Okay, Harold. Hello. How are you? Good. Good. Does the hair get in the way of the fingers when playing? Sometimes, but usually not. Excellent. But that's very rock and roll. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> I, I'm planning to get rid of it. Uh, very good. Yeah. Well, don't worry. The good Lord will do that for you in in no time at all. You get to my age, and and it's this is all fake, <laughs> by the way. I, I luckily I bought this 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 hair before lockdown. Um, how old are you, young man? Nineteen. Okay, so have you have you graduated high school? Are you at conservatoire? What, what, what yeah, I'm, I'm in first course in conservatoire. First, first year conservatoire. Okay. Yeah. And you're going to play uh, uh, Elegy. Uh, why? Well, <laughs> because I like it. It's really nice piece and romantic. Uh, I kind of like romantic stuff on the bass how it sounds it's really good okay and, that, that, and have you ever played this with a piano yeah i have okay. but it was uh, a few years ago okay and and now have are you going to play this in do you have like an end of year exam or a, a something that a performance that you have to do yeah it's i'm going to play this in exam okay good have you heard me play this no, actually. <laughs> <laughs> you and many millions of others. It pro it's probably best to keep it that way. Um, uh, okay, good. All right. Uh, off you go. I look forward to it.
very, very good, Harold. Very, very good. I'm just going to pick up my bass. Um, hang on a minute. I'll just get my phone as well, so I don't go over time. Very good. All right. Um, Harold, what what does what does elegy mean? Aha. <laughs> and, okay, that wasn't meant to be a trick question. <laughs> okay, I, I, I mean the way that you described it, I like romantic music. Uh, um, uh, the uh, there, there is no doubt that it is a romantic. Um, has got a romantic feel to it, but actually, I I don't see it. I I, I mean, a, an elegy is actually a lament. It's it's actually it's this sort of reflection. Uh, uh, it, it's something sad. It's a, it's a it's a sad thing, not necessarily a passionate. Um, uh, uh, sort of romantic thing. I mean, the music itself is romantic, um, as in it, it, it brings it brings feelings of 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 warmth. But in actual fact, the the, the a, a, an elegy is is a is a sort of um, sometimes a poem or a, or a piece of uh, a piece of prose, uh, some words that have been written. And it's normally about something that has gone away, that is that is uh, um, sad. And I'm not quite sure that that's how you play it. Um, and that's I didn't feel very very much sadness there. I, I, I when you played it, although I enjoyed it very much, um, I think you might be slightly missing the point uh, of 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 the piece. And I think it works better if you reconsider what the piece is about and why you're doing it and what it is that you want to say with it. Um, so for instance, just at the very beginning, I, 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 I was watching, but I completely forgotten. Do you start with an up or a down bow? Uh, a down. Right. And I, and, and I think there, there, uh, the reason there is 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 what's going to end up happening. Whereas yeah. I think that it, it's here. And so if we start with. We've got chum 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 running all the way through. The way that you're play you're playing is is you're like a sort of a, it's a fish in, in in going up the stream and it's suddenly you're darting from one place to another. And I I'm playing it more sort of you know blue whale <laughs> and and sort of you know, it's a bit, it's a more of a reflection of my body, but it, it's 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 um. Uh, it, it, or, or elephant. I, I'm going somewhere slowly, surely, definitely, uh, and I've worked out every single move. It, 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 and so I'm not going to fall over. There's no surprises. There's no nothing. I'm telling the story because it's a sad story in a very purposeful way. And I'm trying to do that with the notes as well. So just because when they're written on the page, they look fast. So doesn't mean we need to play them fast. It's mm -hmm. just an editor or a machine that's written them out like that. So for it, for it, you know, it's not that the uh, if if they were to literally make them all exactly the same distance apart and exactly the same size. We would play this music very differently. It's just that what we read, we read it fast. So this is why I was saying I don't think you need the music. Nobody needs the music for this. Um, 
And so if you take yourself away from the page and start really listening to what it is that you're playing, I think you'll play it a little bit differently. And, and I think a little less, do you know the word frenetic? Frenetic is, is, is like, it's like computer bits going, it's a little bit, or that fish, that darting fish. Yeah. It just needs to, actually you just need to chill. And, and I think it will be a lot more successful. Um, so there, there's, there's a couple of little technical things that I'd like to discuss with you. And that is, first of all, your vibrato. Um, I was just discussing with, with um, uh, Gustavs about the, the idea that vibrato is flavour. I don't know whether you do any cooking, are you still living at home or are you, are you living by yourself? At home. So do, do, do you cook? <laughs> well, sometimes. Okay, so when you, when you cook, you, you, you buy your, let's say, your meat and your vegetables and you put it into a pan. And then in order to make it something, uh, you add herbs. So you open up your herb cupboard and depending on whether you're cooking Chinese or Indian or Italian, you then add those herbs. And the amount of herbs that you use really can change a meal completely. You know this, you've cooked this, you've cooked enough. The amount, even salt and pepper is a herb. And whereas if you just use one herb all the time, you end up cooking like I cook, which is just to basically taste, everything tastes the same. It doesn't matter whether it's Indian, Italian or Chinese. It all tastes crap. Um, and Whereas the clever chefs are putting in different herbs in their food and the even more brilliant ones are changing the herbs per mouthful so that you've then got this sort of, actually it's very amusing, if you want, when, when you get to go to a super expensive restaurant, a restaurant, it's like a performance, it's like an opera. Every mouthful is another scene and that is how I think that we should regard vibrato as the herbs cupboard. So sometimes we use lots, sometimes we use a little, and the idea is that we build up over a piece, over a meal, how much. Now, if we just put on herbs or don't use any herbs at all, then it's going to taste weird. Are, 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 we, are we understanding the herbs analogy here? <laughs> it's, it's a little bit blunt, I'm sorry, but it's the best way I can describe it. It, it's it, it uh, and here in lies your issue that your vibrato on vibrato off vibrato on My God, you're going straight to hell if you play a harmonic here. On, off, obviously. On. Now, have I made my point? It, it, it's, I made it sound a lot uglier than you were playing it. That's, I didn't mean to offend you in any way. But the reality is I don't think you're thinking for one second about the vibrato that you're using and also the type of vibrato you're using. You're an all herbs or no herbs guy. And your playing will improve hugely if you just think about the type of vibrato that you're using and when you're using it. Are you able to, can we just try, can you just play a D on a first finger and do vibrato on it? Just play the note. Okay. Okay, are you able to do that much slower, your, your vibrato much slower? Half that speed. Okay, so, yeah, no, that's fine. So, and then, are, are you able to do this? Are you able to, to go very, very slow and speed up with, with the same width? Okay. All right, you 
you're nearly there. So the the uh, it, by and keeping the same width. Uh, so let's play the C. It's, it's slightly easier on the bass. So uh, what I'm seeing is that as you get faster, it, the the width gets gets small. I want to keep the same width. Do you do you know what I mean? And all you're doing is moving your hand faster, but keeping the same width. Okay. Did I see that you get to a point where it suddenly goes faster? You've got this yeah, kind of key. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you, you and many, many, many other players, by the way, this is something you are going to have to fix. Y your, your bass playing will not improve to the rate that you want it to unless you fix this. You're at an advantage that you can do vibrato. So there are many that can't do it at all, that are completely like sort of like they're, they're, they're having an electric prod put up their ass and it like, uh, like and, uh, you know, but you're not one of those. So you can do vibrato, but do not enjoy it too much. You can't do it well enough yet. And I beg you to work very, very hard. There's a there's a there are many different techniques to get through the the uh, uh, the, the 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 sudden uh, moment, um, and and it's it's a little bit like um, you know when you put plastic on a on a on a book or something. There's always a, a bubble in there, and you basically got to push the bubble out to the end of the plastic so that it's all nice and uh, or a plastic on glass. You know? Do you know what I mean? Uh, you know what I'm talking about? But so you basically got to work through it. You got to push all the bubbles, or, or putting a screen protector on your phone. That's so now we're talking youth. Um, you know, there's always a bloody bubble in the, an air bubble, and we need to just push that to the edge. And this is how. This is the way I learned to do it. And there are many techniques to learn how to do vibrato. Um, but by the fact that you can move your hand back and forward doesn't mean you're doing vibrato. It just you put a vibrato so you've got one herb in the cupboard and I need you to work on this. The way you do it is to start very, very slowly and, and gradually getting faster, keeping that width going and then you get to the point where, where it's suddenly and, and, and then you go back and you work through it and you keep working through it and then you start fast but, but wide. Fast but wide, and you get slower, and you'll get to this point where you go, uh, and you suddenly go super slow. It's that is the bubble. You need to just keep going either side of that, working it, working it, working it. And if you go, you're getting faster, and then getting slower again, to the point where you are controlling it, not it controlling you. And then you do the, on the second finger the same thing. I don't expect you to be able to do it now. If uh, and it sounds really horrible, but this is about vibrato. It's not about how what noise you're making and whatever. You need to do this exercise, and 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 uh, push it through, push it through. And when it suddenly goes, just go back a little bit and push it through again. And 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 so it becomes a completely relaxed. Thing that you're in control of. I promise you that if you do this properly, then you will wake up one day and you're just able to do vibrato. Whichever, I promise you, that's that's just the way it goes. There's another technique which is essentially the same thing, which is to set a mic, uh, metronome. And so, you know, if you've got tick, 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 tick. <laughs> So if, if you look, I'll show you what I mean. Um, uh, these are just two little techniques that I'm going to give you for free. Um, so if, if let's, let's uh, hang on a minute, let me just. So can you hear that? Yeah. So so. <laughs> at 96 and then you put it up to let's say 100 so so four clicks a time so, 
keeping the width the same and you keep going up and up and up and eventually you get to this and you keep going up and you see what I mean so you're pushing through so it's this basically it's the same thing that it will, you will eventually hit this point where which is the bit that you can't control it but you're just going either side of it and and just pushing it pushing it pushing it and eventually you just it's like a twitch you just just eventually it's habit that's all and you absolutely i can see it already will be able to get through this so once you've done that and the next time i see you i want to make sure that you've 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 done that um you then need to decide where and when you're going to use this vibrato well just use the vibrato that you use at the moment so can you just start from the beginning again? You can start with the down bow, it doesn't matter. I just suggest the up bow. So, sorry. Uh, I mean, it, it doesn't really, doesn't matter. Actually, I change quite a lot, but generally I start on an up bow. And, and you, can, you can do whatever you like, but um, yeah, that would be my advice. Just give it a try, yep. Carry on. Okay, good. Now, um, the 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 reason why I start on nut bow is because what we don't want to do is uh, we absolutely don't want to do that. We want to do the exact opposite of that. So because this the up bow on the high D covers up an awful lot of very risky shit you don't need that you don't need the music you don't need the music it's about you understanding uh, uh, it's about you understanding the concept rather than the actual uh, bowing what i want you to understand is that is that the the bowing that you use that we choose to use uh it is is not just a technical thing it's a musical thing yeah so so if if you uh, that that's it, it it's just very unmusical because if you were to sing it da, 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 and then you'd probably pop into falsetto da, and and it's a soft sorry my voice is dreadful but it's a very soft uh thing it's not ba, da, 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 ha, da, da, i mean of course we wouldn't sing it like that da, 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 ya, da, 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 da and then we start building up again so that's the first thing and the second thing Harold is it, it you are on a one-way ticket to hell where things are not good all you hang out with is viola players if you go to hell and you are going on a one-way ticket to hell if you use a harmonic on that D the only way to redeem yourself the only way is to go to church and find a way of shifting there and landing that D. If you play the harmonic, the gods will hurt you. It's as simple as that. So the and so the easiest way to do it, of course, is if you start with an up bow, then and a really nice slow shift, and then you cover up an awful lot of nasty stuff by just hitting that if you if i hear that i i just so uh, it sends shivers down my spine it's not a very big shift you do bigger shifts in distance if i was to say to play an a flat and then an f then something like that you would do that no problem this distance is smaller it's just the fact that, that we, we're having to go from here into thumb position. That's the only thing that, right, that's the only thing that the distance itself is not so big. It's smaller than, it's smaller than that. Do you understand what I mean? So, so actually I should measure it uh, to, to really prove my point very well. 
But the... And then what I would suggest is that you don't leave your thumb until the last moment. You start bringing it round just a fraction earlier. So you're already there. So in other words... And then you suddenly having to... If you're worried about bringing your thumb round, don't leave it there for the shift. Bring it round just a fraction before. So it's. Can you see what I mean by that? So you. So can we just try that? Start with an up bow. Da, 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 da. F. Start with an up bow. Start with an up bow. Yeah. Start the D with it. Good. It's really, really, really good. It's really, it sounds really a lot better if you do it with an up bow. So work out how to do that. Now, can we, can we just try and do that shift um, as slowly as you possibly dare? Because the thing is, with, with your, with your shift, is your, it's quite fast and it's forcing, it's almost forcing an accent on it, and we want the exact opposite. Nice slow shift. time as you're going up there so it's you've got so much time there's there's re, you're in no hurry and also I, I I think maybe the the turn before it can be also if, you, if you'd like literally take all the stress away from it all the things that make that shift awful take them away throw them away what you're left with is just and if i put a gun to your head you would be able to do that no problem so it, it's it's we we somehow in our heads we make it much bigger than it actually is it's just a shift from e to d that's all so the, take your time on if if you play this fast it's gonna you you're setting yourself up that you have to get to the d quicker so if you do the turn slower, then it matches in with the next note. Do you see what I mean? I'll try, I'll try and explain it again. We have to... It's just... And it, it works so much better, actually. The slower the turn, the better. The turn meaning... So try doing those notes slower, so then you set up the shift slower and you land it more accurately. Woo! Hallelujah. I think we might have just saved you from hell. I think so. I don't know. Um, but I, for me, that's so much more beautiful. Uh, I don't know about whether you agree with me. In a way, I hope you don't, and you're going to prove me wrong because there's a million ways of playing this piece. But this is just my preference: um, is that it's sweeter in that way. So, and then, so can you go for? It? Let's do it again. So make sure it wasn't a fluke, and then carry on. Ah, uh, no, it was a fluke. Slow, slower turn, slower turn. No, no, sorry, Harold. Harold, I, 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 I think you should play the ba da 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 slower. Even more. That's it. That's it. It's actually quite difficult to play slow, but if you got plum plum cling cling underneath, and so. It's just, it, 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 if it's perfectly in time, which it doesn't need to be, of course it doesn't need to be, then it's already slow. If you take a fraction of time, which is where I'm absolutely where I think you should do, so of 
da 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 yeah. It's really, really a lot slower than you want to play it, and you can get away with it, and it sounds better. So just try it one more time, and then carry on. Good, 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 good. That's much better. No, that's that's much. Better. Yeah, it, it, but it, it actually it's fine. So I I in order to avoid that. So and I just retake because I think this is where the music goes. And it's such a nice, it's such a nice way up there. And then here. So, so the, the, um, let's, can you just go from there? Just try this. So you're, uh, uh, Which you're going to land on a down bow. So it's from that E. Can you just go from there? And then another down here. Then. Oh, you do that beautifully it's that's really gorgeous that's really gorgeous I wonder just to really settle in you can you can just land on the open G for a fraction longer and I think you've really got a beautiful phrase there it's really just literally go from there from the retake from the open G Sorry, sorry, no, no, sorry, from the open G, for the... Yeah. That, well, it's, uh, somebody died in the background. I, I tell you why that is, somebody dropped to, if somebody died behind you, that's, that's because you played the harmonic, that's because you did the D harmonic. Yeah, you see, I told you, I told you, it's the, the Bottasini gods uh, are punishing you for doing a D harmonic there. I'm just saying. <laughs> the, uh, the, um, this, when you played the uh, chromatic scale slower, it was so much more beautiful. Okay, carry on. Okay, good, good. Now we come on to the next issue for you, which is how much bow are you using and what effect does that have on the string? So, uh, 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 and you, so you've suddenly, there's this sort of random sort of suddenly using lots of bow on a, on, a, on a note which doesn't make any sense musically. So the, uh, if, we were to, if we were to play this down the octave, can you, can you just try doing it down the octave? It's actually quite difficult. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So, but do it with your bowing, which I don't actually like, but it's fine. I just want, and the reason I don't like it, I'm going to show you in a second. But just do it again down the octave and try and make it as musical as possible down the octave. Mm -hmm. 
So, the... Is that right? And then the long down bow. Now, if you just if you just try this, so is that the bowing still? So down, up, down. Is that what the one you were doing? Okay, so you're using the, the you're suddenly using the yeah, whole I bow. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. This is I'm making a very big, long-winded thing out of you're using too much bow on those short notes, and it, and it's suddenly like these random notes come out. So it sounds to me. <laughs> which doesn't make any sense to me at all. So the way to do that is to not use as much bow and put it in the music. So, and by the way, the reason why we're doing it down the octave is because when we do it up the octave, uh, it suddenly it sounds really super loud. Or, or whatever, whatever bowing you're doing. So, so, concentrate here. Can you just try that? Beautiful. Now try it up the octave. Exactly the same thing. No, 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 no. Hey, 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 no, 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 no. No, just because it's up, uh, just because it's in thumb position doesn't mean you can throw away everything that you did with the right hand. So that was why we did it in, in the lower octave. That's exactly the right idea. Now, you, what what you didn't do in the lower octave, what you because we're going to that's where we're going to. What you then did in the upper octave was lumpy notes doesn't equal musical. It just equals lumpy notes. <laughs> That's it. Okay, that's it. That's the right. Now, now do your bowing that you, the proper bowing that you do. No, 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 no. It, this sudden. That's not. That's. It's not nice. One more time. Really smooth it out. Good. You're, you're, you're so, so nearly there. It's really, it's a great improvement for, I think. But just make sure that here, this is good. And then you don't panic. And because the uh, going from up to down bow sounds a little bit uglier than from down to up bow. So it's lovely. Now if I were to do it the way you do it and start with an up bow is what I'm getting. Okay. So you, you suddenly there's a sudden rush of the bow when you're going from up to down. Imagine that you're when you're doing it in the up to down you're actually going down to up. And so so try not to play into the to the um, the fact that it's heavier here. You need to work much harder on the up to down. This is easy. This is difficult. Because because we it, it's what what's happening is the technique of you going from up to down is coming first and not the music. And and so what we're hearing is you playing 
I, 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 I don't want to hear uh, what I was lucky enough to study with Klaus Stoll. Do you know who Klaus Stoll was? He's a, he was a he was the principal bass of the Berlin Philharmonic Orchestra, and an amazing musician. Still is an amazing musician. And he said something to me which really stuck with me, and I think this will work for you. That he said, I don't want to hear the bass, I want to hear music. And this is a really very simple line that actually really dictates everything the way that I play now. That music must win. Music must be the absolute at the forefront of what you're doing. And so every decision that you take technically must be because of the music. So it's not, it's the music that dictates everything. The music is, is I, I want to do ba da 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 Listen to me, I sound like Pavarotti. But it gives you the idea, what I don't want to do is ba da 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 It just sounds ridiculous. So when we sing, we need to imitate uh, the, the music that we want to hear, it's even better if you can just hear it. And quite often if you're hearing it, it doesn't include lumps. But when we're listening to ourselves playing, which is what you need to do more, is really listen to yourself. Not just feel it, you're a very feely player, I can see that. But really listen to what you're doing. Don't record it, because when we record it, we only listen to what we want to hear. So you really need to imagine that you are me. And am I? Do I want you to hear that? Or uh, or whatever the, the, the uh, preferably in tune with a with a, <laughs> with a nice sound. But you know what I mean. It's really uh, so. I want you now on just this run. To really concentrate on the on what it is that you want me to hear, absolutely musically, not technically. From that from that scale. Now, what's interesting is you keep doing the, yeah. But it's interesting you've done that twice, and I wonder whether naturally. And here is another really interesting point when you've got a very musical player like you that when you're trying to play something musically, you have naturally gone to a different bowing. And that should not be ignored because okay. maybe, maybe that is just the most natural way to get the music out. You will not go to hell by changing the bowing. So it's, I know it's, it is, this is, actually, this is a major discussion we're having here, but do you, what, I mean, how close do you go to the music that's written on the page? What we know about Bottasini is that he wasn't, a, he, he wasn't a, a um, I mean, he was a technically amazing player, but he was a complete show off. And, and show-offs change things all the time. And it was just the edition, just the one version has ended up, and probably the edition you've got is different from the edition that I've got on there. So there are many, many different versions of an edition. It's just somebody saying, I think that's where that slur should be. But And so here is a good starting point. So take it, play it, and then improve on it. So theoretically, they should, every person should do their own edition. And an edition is just another person putting markings into the original score. It is not the Bible. And so if you naturally, so... If you naturally come there, there is nothing wrong with that at all, as long as it works musically. So this is a much bigger discussion, but it's interesting that when you're trying to be musical, that horrible bowing that stopped you being musical in the first place just naturally disappears by accident. 
I, w I wonder whether you might be onto something. That's all. There's, there's no right or wrong answer. And, the th and, and, the, and here is the problem with bass playing, Harold. Sorry, I'm uh, we're, we're nearly out of time. And, um, uh, but here is the problem with bass playing and making music. There is no right or wrong. It just is what it is. And, and so it, it's, it's virtually impossible for me to say, you should be doing this bowing. In, in, fact, in fact, if I were to say, this is the bowing you should be using, this is the fingering you should be using, then I'm making you play like me, which I don't want you to do. I want you to play like you. And the reason for that is because when in the future I hear a bass player, I want to go, geez, that sounds like Harold. So because you've worked out what it is that you want to say musically, and then you attach your technique onto that, as opposed to, geez, that sounds like a student of, I was going to say, I'm not going to say any names, but you know, ev every American player going. <laughs> Wow, they all sound exactly the same. And for me, I think that's a shame. I, th I th really think that's a shame because you clearly have stuff to say musically. So the problem with this is that then you, when you look at a piece of music, there are so many bloody options that you don't know which ones to choose because you can start on an up bow, you can start on a down bow. Oh my God, somebody just tell me what to do. And that's how you create you and you work it out and it's it's quite a long climb so um i want to just quickly carry on uh... Uh, uh... can you go from here coming back into into normal position okay do, don't use the bloody harmonic what's the matter with you you don't need to use the harmonic you played that so beautifully reason why we go up there is because there's this different timbre there's this different feeling to it so now what you're trying to do is force the same kind of sound as if we were on the G string so now if we go on to the D string and we instead of if we take full advantage of the fact that there's a different color and then complete, come completely away so it's almost like that that point where you you can barely say anything you're so sad and that i think you you do you because you're able to go up the d string you're able to use this trick so beautifully can you just try that one more time and see whether just see whether you like it you could throw it away after i've gone but i'd just love to hear it from you okay if you if you use the harmonic one more time i'm gonna have to send over a rocket but take away all the weight all the weight in the right hand this is gorgeous and you're working incredibly hard with your left hand take away all the weight can you can you just try that just from there up bow up bow so try with an up bow take away 
Okay, it's slightly, it's slightly more towards the fingerboard, and and away, take away all the weight. So it's literally just the weight of the bow is is on the string. Okay, but with no sudden, uh, no sudden. Uh, I think that's beautiful. Now, can you just try it with the run? And you don't need a whole bow. Try, try not to try not to use the whole bow. You, you, you've got a habit of going. You don't. It just. It. You don't need to. I'm literally okay. Don't go past halfway. So here and then from the up bow. Don't go past halfway. Take away all the weight. So it's super delicate and really uh, uh, like uh, vulnerable. gone past halfway no 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 you're way past halfway I don't want you to go past halfway no wait no no can you see can you see that you're you're going up to the frog yeah literally literally do not go past halfway at any point so here you're using half the bow only in fact, I'm using this much. You really, really don't need to. Because then you're forced to be really, really careful with it. You're so close. No, no, sorry. Good God alive, that's a beautiful sound. Uh, do, you, do you see what I'm going on about? It, it, takes, it takes 50 times more effort to play that beautifully, but the payoff is a thousand times more. Now, if you don't agree with what I'm saying musically, that's fine. I mean, goodness gracious, I play it one way. Uh, there, are, there are thousands of different ways of playing it. But... but what what I what I need what I need to know for sure is what it is that you want to say musically, and not me just watching you play the bass. I I I need to see it music, and you've got so much music going through you. I that is obvious to see, and just in a, in an hour of you looking at your bow, going, hang on a minute. Well, if I if I just use less bow. Or if I just put in a slur instead of using the, 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 the bowing that is, is in the music that's his, it's not his, it's an editor's, um, then suddenly I'm making a much more musical phrase. And I think that, that, but each of those decisions has to be practiced and worked out and really done um, and, and studied and, and you know, practiced again. So it's none of it is a fluke. It's all worked out. And then you've got this amazing amount of choices that you can just pick out the drawer any time, each of which have, you've worked on and studied and done. You, my man, are going to be a very good bass player. A very musical bass player. This is, this is, and this is what it's all about. I rarely hear, and I'm not, gonna, I'm not just blowing smoke up your ass, but this is true. I rarely hear a, 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 a bass player of your age that's got so many good musical ideas. And for me, this is the most exciting. Whether you can, you, we can all practice, but if you're naturally musical and you're able to express that even a little on the bass, which is a very difficult instrument to be musical on, then you're, you're onto a good thing. Make me a promise here and now that you're gonna work your bollocks off to be as good as you can possibly be. And don't waste this talent, please. Hang on, did you promise me that? Yeah, yeah.
Okay, I'm good. I'm trying to work my <laughs> <laughs> off. <laughs> Excellent. Really, what a great pleasure. Thank you very much, Harold. Thank you. I, I look forward to our paths crossing again um, uh, sometime in the future. And uh, th that's very exciting. And uh, go get your haircut. Okay. I can't wait to see how long is the hair of the next guy, girl, uh, guy. Uh, uh, so it... this much. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Thank you very much, young man. Thank you. I really enjoyed that. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Great.